wanna be a Monty boy? <laughs> That's us, folks. Welcome back to the podcast. Yeah, we're the Munchie Boys, and you're not. Yeah, except that other, except that other Munchie Boy account. Right. Yeah. You, you can you can be <laughs> a Munchie Boy or Munchie Girl or Munchie whatever. I told you about that. I texted you that, right? No. Oh my gosh, you're in for a surprise. What? I think I forgot. Oh, my brother told me because I was like, "Oh, did you listen to the last episode of the Munchie Boys?" And then he was like, "Oh no, I got to check it out." And then he he looked, and then he goes, "Oh my." god there's literally another munchie boys and i was like no what are you talking about and he's and he sent me he told me what it was he said look on youtube it's they have a french fry background and so i looked and some other some other kids started up just munchie boys but not the munchie boys and i went to it and what it appears from all from all uh angles it appears like it's uh, uh a bunch of young kids that are like if they seem like they're stoned or something, but they're like playing Uno, like, and it's just the Uno game on the screen the whole time, um, like digital, like digital Uno. And yeah, you'll have to look it up. And it's them talking about like far out ideas, like they sound like they're high, and they're just talking and playing Uno. Here's what we need to do: we need to hunt these kids down <laughs> and send them to jail. <laughs> it's funny because we were talking about it last night, and I was saying, uh, I was saying we should actually just become like funny rivals with them, like be like we're the munchie boys and then they're like no we're munchie boys and we're like whatever yeah like instead of being like you instead of being like you must cease and desist we'll just start like a friendly they rivalry. can be our cease and desist podcast oh um yeah they started three months ago these, these guys, guys are stealing our munch we got episodes way before that well also the platform isn't even remotely the same like i said they're literally playing digital uno and like smoking weed and talking about like awkward ideas like well it says uno but maybe they go to uno maybe they're actually omaha people who uh heard about like the munchie boys and they're like no ah man we're the munchie boys and we're like no we're we the should, munchie uh, boys you're just munchie boys you're just munchie boys because you have the munchie we need to like fl- hunt down uh peter cute nate alex gomez <laughs> and you three i a uh yeah, those are those are Munchie Boys. They're not the Munchie Boys because the Munchie Boys are us. Okay, there everybody, could be only one don't Munchie ever boy. confuse us. Tell them what. There could be only one Munchie Boy. <laughs> what do you got set up there, Aaron? Tell the people. Well, I'll tell you, Tony, and I'll tell the people. Oh, was that? Let's go back in time to a long, long, long time ago, in the year. 1990 or 91 or something and Casio released the world's first rap keyboard oh my gosh rap man I had one of these back like you know in like 1990 whatever and it was always kind of like the most ridiculous thing ever it was a rap keyboard so you'd have all these weird little rap patterns like this And it has this little, like, microphone where you can speak in, like, a really high-pitched voice, like, Yo, yo, we're the Munchie Boys, boys! <laughs> or, Yo, yo, we're the Munchie Boys, boys! <laughs> My buddy Matt and I would always, uh, we created this fictional, like, fictional, <laughs> this fictional rap band called Fortress of Evil, where, like, we were, uh, these, uh, you know, we basically were kind of like ICP before ICP, but, like, not serious. And we would, like, you know, start, like, make little wow. beats. And then make ridiculous lyrics like Satanic Circus and other things that I'm not going to repeat here. Things that, you know, <laughs> were obviously very farcical, just like, you know, teenage boys kind of making fun of, like, things. And, I mean, I remember at the time, you know, the only white rappers we had were Beastie Boys, Vanilla Ice, and Snow. You know, I mean, it wasn't... This is yeah. pre-Eminem, so, you know, it, it was a... It was a it was a, a crazy crazier time to make fun of things. <laughs> but anyways, uh, nice. John Taffer is my Casio synth pimp, and occasionally uh, I'll get a message from him that he's got a couple Casio SK ones or something, and uh, I will buy them because I have a uh, 
obsession with Casio SK-1s. For some people, it's Catcher in the Rye. Some people can't walk past a copy of Catcher in the Rye without buying it and uh, shooting... um, well, don't say the president. Um, John John or Lennon. Or Jerry Maguire. Like, they see the VH- VHS yeah. of Jerry Maguire, and they just have but to grab it. for me, it. it's Casio SK-1s. If I see a Casio SK-1, I got to buy it. But this time, he had a Casio Ratman in the box, so... That's awesome. So it was brand new or just in the box? Just in the box. It didn't have the packing stuff. Oh, nice. And this nice. isn't the original microphone, but, you know. Oh, okay. But it still works. It, it still works. works. And it's like... If it's a cheapy little microphone, then, a ri- then obviously it'll do the same thing. So normally when we, you know, every episode has like the vintage synthesizer or something, I'm not going to do the Rap Man. It'd be hilarious to do the Rap Man and have us rap over it or something, but this is just a toy. I've already, I already have something crazy you know planned for that but that'll happen much later so you've got that to look forward to that the legit one will happen later for this one you'll just be you can just play it throughout the episode for fun yeah this is just a little toy to play with although we have done casios we did the casio sk1 in our one of our season one we respect casio actually it doesn't sound bad it's we respect casio don't see how warm the warm strings are I mean, who am I kidding? I think my actual keyboard is a Casio, isn't it? Like a, let me see real quick. I'm gonna... Yeah, that's actually kind of uh, not bad. I mean, I can't tell. I need to look up my my actual 88 key, weight, 88 weighted key keyboard, I think is potentially a Casio because it's the Nivea. The Nivea oh, yeah, line. India. I was like, the India line, what, which one's that? Is it, did I just say the wrong thing? Let me, uh, I'm frustrating myself. Oh, I just broke my printer. You broke your printer? Yeah, like I swung out of the chair and like broke off the little paddle thing. Tony, quit swinging and breaking things. What the heck is wrong with you? God, it's like I'm a little monkey, like a Curious George swinging around my room. Curious George, the curious little monk way. Oh, Privia, not Nivea. I'm such an idiot. Privia, Nivea. I was going to say, isn't Nivea like a like a hand lotion or something? I know, or like a medication. Like, if you take Nivea. If you're having complications. Privia. Oh, yeah, Casio. See, I'm bumping a Casio, 88 key. Heck, yeah, you are. Weighted, I'll say. I'm not playing around with any of those little bounce back keys. Mine doesn't you're- have weighted keys, and there's not 88 of them. I'm going to say there's probably only like 25 of them. I'm... You're like in the world of synthesis. It's not about weighted keys. It's about the whole bounce back key. No, I'm I'm not a weighted key person. I'm not because I'm not I'm not a pianist. I'm a synthesis. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. You know, I mean, if I had a weighted keys, it's like, ah, it's hard <laughs> for me to like, you know, play something like patch fifteen synth lead. So I'd be like, oh, I've got to actually work at it and push keys and actually be good at playing it. You know, I I, yeah. I don't want that. I want synth action all day long. Are you kidding me? I know. I know. Yeah, lady, are you nuts? <laughs> Aaron, I forgot. What is this podcast about again? Uh, isn't this the uh, the Casio Boys where we talk about Casios? Oh and- yeah, the Casio. It's like ready, Casio Boys, the Casio Rap Boys. Man Edition. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for showing up today. We're going to talk about our Casio keyboards over here. I got a Privia. <laughs> I got the Casio keyboard. Call me Cassiopeia, cause I'm. Uh, I'm from uh, Pangea, you know the original place where there was everything. Oh. Uh, they... Everything, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> everything. Fun story. I think this was uh, Jacob from the Faint had a, a rap man where he put a C on it and called it Crap Man. It could have been Todd. I forget which one, but one of those, one of them had a rap man with that had a nice. the C at it, so it was the Crap Man. Nice. I know Jacob was more into like the circuit bending, so it might have actually might have been him. Sweet, but uh, yeah. Fun little factoid there. But you're right. This isn't the Casio boys. We don't talk about Casios. I mean, we do. But um, this is the Munchie Boys. Oh, the food podcast. We're Where Omaha's we wackiest food podcast. You may have seen us on YouTube. You may have seen us on Facebook or Instagram. You may have seen us in Omaha Magazine. The full page ad, not in the actual magazine. You may see us there. You may see us there or see us. 
or at, see. Oh, oh see, wait, wait. What am I, I saying? I see what you just did there. Or see, or see us at. Where'd we go, Tony? What'd we do? We went to Orsi's Bakery. What? The Italian the bakery, Italian bakery. In, uh, in, in, in South Omaha, Little Italy? Yeah. You're kidding me. We did that today? Can, can you believe that? I can because we did, and we, we had it. We munched it, didn't we? And guess where it is, everybody? I'm, I'm about to tell you. 621 Pacific Street. Pacific Street. 621. And that's in Omaha, Nebraska. Yep. Area code 681 I'll be honest, Tony. I've never been in Orsi's prior to today. Oh, my gosh. Honestly, I mean, I had an idea of where it was, but I didn't really know where it was. I mean, I knew it was kind of, you know, South Pacific, somewhere in the South Pacific Islands, but I wasn't really (laughs) sure exactly where, where, where it was. Oh, my God. But we called our orders in. We picked them up at noon, which may have been a mistake because I feel like if you call the orders in like at 1115 and say like, I'm going to pick it up at noon. They probably just make it right away and then it's like and sitting out there. And then just let it sit. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah I, I, we I, called I even felt, earlier. I felt like it would have been better had I called them. Like 20, said, like 30 minutes before. Yeah. Or and then picked yeah. it up the second it came out of the oven because like, you know, by the time that we pick it up and take our pictures and drive home and eat and play with our rap man. Yeah. Okay. So anyways. By the time you place your order and we pick it up, we take our pictures outside and bring. I'm not. Wait, what am I doing? I, I'm, I'm not a. I'm not a rapper. Um, anyways, that's more a, like Mario Brothers or like video game music. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, it's Our, like the yeah. most lighthearted rap ever. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. So many of these beats are like so completely seared into my stupid brain. Like video from game playing music. with this thing, you know. Just like I remember those and like our our weird like farcical lyrics to them, which I will not repeat. <laughs> Here they don't really hold up too well in that. Uh... But anyways, um, anyways, yeah, the food is a little on the cold. May, might not have been as, as fresh as it would have been had we got it straight oh, out of the dang oven. Dang it! Well, let's dive into what we dove into from Orsi's. Diving into the diving in, Tony. You 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 go ahead and start. You go ahead and tell okay, us what you dove okay, into. Okay, okay, okay. Because I'm excited. I'm excited. Excited. Okay, I will say. I will say. I've been here a couple times. I've had it a few times, but. The last time, I think me and Whitney hadn't gone here for like a year, maybe, or something before. Uh, we They actually sell other stuff, too, folks. They sell bread. They sell rolls that are freshly baked. That's why it's called Orsi's Bakery. They do. And yes. Uh, they sell some lovely stuff. They sell meats. They sell cheeses. They sell canned goods, jarred goods. I don't know if it's called jarred goods, but... And then pizza and other Italian dishes. So, what we got... We got the double crusted pizza called the Gouda Rooney. Ooh, the Gouda Rooney. And we went with the broccoli Gouda Rooney. And you want want to hear what's on it? Broccoli? Hamburger, broccoli, potato, onion, and cheese. And that retails at twenty eight fifty. Yikes. And that's pretty I, that's kind I, of a lot, but let me just say it was totally worth it. And I mean those so things big. are big. Those are like big double crusted, like big like like meals, almost like a yeah, it was gigantic. I should have uh, got that. Oh, I, sh- I should I should have got a Gouda Rooney. I didn't, but I mean, it sounds good. Let me guess: is the cheese Gouda? Oh, it's so Gouda Rooney. Actually, I don't know. I wonder if it's just normal. You would think so because it's spelled like Gouda, but I don't know. Yeah, because it doesn't specify that. Um, maybe maybe uh, I, might, I might Google Gouda Rooney. Yeah, you should do that. Maybe is is that a uh, Orsi's creation or is that something that it's a known thing? Oh. Um. Although, yeah, let's see. Let's see where it was created. created. Gouda Rooney Pizza Origin. Um, I wonder if it's any connection to, like, Andy Rooney. Oh. I'll give you a little uh, Gouda Rooney Pizza Origin music. Was Gouda Rooney created in Omaha? I don't know. Tony's looking up with Gouda Rooney's history. We're gonna bring it to you Cause we're the Munchie Boys We don't play Uno We're the Munchie Boys The other Munchie Boys Let's see here Yeah Rooney. Oh, Ooh, Pinterest. sitar Pinterest. Uh, man I might, I might have some trouble finding this I don't know if I can find it Maybe it's an unknown thing Maybe it is Maybe, I mean, I, it wouldn't surprise me that uh, Why is there no lore? I'm trying to look up the lore, and I can't find lore. 
The thing to remember is Orsi's has been in business for 101 years. They opened in 1919, Tony. I know. So that's the thing is they could have ca- came up with a Scooter Rooney like 97 years ago and like nobody else has it. I know. They could have been the origin. I'm looking up uh, if you go to like Pinterest or uh there's some recipe sites but they're all they always mention Orsi's Bakery makes this I should have I should have got a Gouda Rooney. I know. My gosh, they're, look at that thing. Lovely. Okay, I'm not, I'm done looking. I can't find it, damn it. Yeah, I think it's safe to say in our like, you know, 5 seconds of looking that it's completely original to Omaha and Orsi's and that uh <laughs> I know that you can get them other places. I know that Big Fred's has them, but you know what? Me and Whitney decided today we liked this one better. We think. Than yeah, and you know I've never actually been to Big Fred's. Uh, surprising because they've got a lot of pinball machines and stuff, and it seems like a cool place that I would enjoy. You know but, who else does you? But I do too. Yeah, so I don't need to go out of the house ever. <laughs> um, but I, I'm pretty sure that Big Fred's hasn't been in business since 1919. I know. This is the longest running. Actually, I don't know. I can't say that. I was going to say the longest running pizza place in Omaha, but I, I guess I don't know. We don't Maybe. know that. Um, I wouldn't surprise me. I mean, how many other pizza places could there be? I mean, there's La Casa, but we don't know how long that's been here. So, You know, I, I don't know the history of La Casa, but I'm going to say La Casa probably. And I'm talking about La Casa Pizzeria. I'm not talking about La Casa Del Huarache. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a good one, too. We love that one. Um, <laughs> if you'll go back to an earlier episode. I believe that was episode number one. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Okay. I bet Orsi's is the original. You want to know why? It says La Casa opened to serve our first pizza in 1953. Not and even we're talking, close, Tony. I know. Okay. Let's just go. We're saying Orsi's is the oldest pizza place. In we're Omaha. talking. And if we're wrong, I will eat my juiced hat. I'm wearing my juiced bikes hat right now. We are the Munchie Boys. We munched on things like like boxes that uh, that we shouldn't munch on sometimes. Um, exactly. You eat cardboard. You rip it apart with your teeth. Sometimes yes. you swallow it like a pill. That was our tasty pizza episode from season one. So uh, remember that one when I ate my cardboard box. Yeah. Yes. Random review. We were Uh-oh. riding. We were riding bikes, stopped by for picnic food. We had the most friendly and accommodating service. We actually went back after our ride and bought more food. Everything was delicious. Other random review. Amazing. Staff is friendly and helpful. And make sure your experience is great. Food is awesome. Support local business. I always say, like, I don't like when people say support local or support local business. It's like... How about support like a good business or like ethical business or like something, somebody that, you know, is a good person or somebody that, you know, is a good product. Like, yeah, I just never like that, like, bl- like blind support local thing. I don't know. Also, and that's a little thing, too, because like even in the cases like fast food restaurants, you know, like like a Sonic might be owned locally and there might be a local yeah, that's owner that owns point. it, you know, or it could be owned by the the, the franchise and. You know, completely, you know, corporate. I mean, obviously, I mean, I'm not trying to say the same that like a family run business has been in the family since 1919 is the same as a. Yeah. Somebody that like, you know, decided to call up like, you know, corporate franchise headquarters of like Sonic and say like, yeah, I'd like to open a Sonic at this location. I mean, it's a, you know, there's a the traffic survey here and there's a good amount of people and there's a diverse like, you know, middle income, you know, whatever. I mean, it's not the same. It's not like somebody's like, I come from a long line of franchisees. Starting with my great grandfather. I'm more for the people that are like, I come from a land down under. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, do you, uh, go to the history part of the website, or are you on it at all, or no? Oh yeah, because I was gonna say we should do our switch off reading. Okay, go for it. Our history: genuine Italian deli in Omaha, Nebraska, founded in 1919 by World War One veteran Alfonso Orsi. Orsi's Bakery and Pizzeria is one of the last remaining icons of Omaha's Little Italy. For decades, their Italian twist bread and hearty Sicilian-style pizza has been a staple of Omaha. During the early years, Alfonso and his family worked in the bakery with the ovens as their sole source of heat. Expansion! A vivid part of Little Italy! I'm not even... I'm, I, no. I, I'm going to try to do it in a wrapping thing, and I cannot, that's going to be horrible. Oh, yeah, It's going to be it. horrible. Come um, on, do it. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. okay. As the restaurant grew, it became a vivid part of the neighborhood known as Little Italy. 
in 1949. Alfonso retired and his son, Claudio Orsi, took over. No, I'm not going to do that. What the heck? I'm sorry, people. Um, <laughs> and Ten years later, in 1997, a devastating fire! And the fire, call it number 55, emergency alarm. That's the emergency alarm. The fire gutted the bakery and destroyed the livelihood of the family. However, the supportive community rallied around the family with a pocket full of shells. Wait, no, they didn't. Not the shell. Forget the shell thing. Um, I can't say rallied around the family without following up with that. Um, look, hey, a car horn. Aaron, the, the family is going to contact us via email and say, uh, tell Aaron thanks for showing the fire part of the story with uh, such decorum. <laughs> Wait a minute. John told me these batteries were new, but I think my... my Rap man just shut off. Maybe it more is more of a crap Dang man. Dang it. And something just happened where I could hear you way less. I don't know why. Huh. Oh, well. Well, may, you know, I'm just going to... I'll just turn my volume up more. Maybe it, maybe it wasn't meant to be for me to play with the rap man. Well, okay. Where, I'm sorry, guys. We were on expansion. That's why so I was anyways, joking about Yeah. The family's going to complain and be like, you didn't show very much decorum as you were reading that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Helping to clean up the rubble and raise funds so that several months later, the bakery was rebuilt in the same location. Now, that's that's a good story. Ignoring all the... What the heck? You know, John, if you're listening, I was told I was buying a Casio Ratman in the box without the original packaging, without the original microphone, but with new batteries. Maybe ah. put, I think he put sawdust in the in the engine just to keep yeah. it running a little a little while longer. One of these days, I, I, one of these I, that's, that's not a thinly veiled. One and of these for days, the gonna... final section of the history, family owned, guaranteed fresh Italian. In 2006, Bob's son, Bob Orsi Jr., and Jim Hall, along with their wives, bought the bakery from Bob and continued the business of providing fresh Italian bread and pizza pies in Omaha, Nebraska. And I won't go on because there's a lot more, but you get it. It kept on and it very much kept with their roots and it's a great place. So I'm going to need you guys to go give it a try. And oh uh, my gosh, they have the loveliest rolls. I've gotten their, their rolls before. Oh my God. You know what we did last time? What did we do last time? Me and Whitney got their uh, breadcrumbs that they have there. The Orsi's breadcrumbs. And okay. then we also got um, other supplies like the hoagie rolls, and we made meatball sandwiches. You made meatball sandwiches? Yeah. Where'd you get the meatballs? Uh, we, oh, what did we do for the meat? Did we buy meat there? I forgot. I don't think we bought meat there, but we made our own, like, we either got hamburger or ground turkey, and we made lovely meatball sandwiches on their bread, and we used their sauce. Because they, they, uh, they did have a deli with meat and cheese items that you could buy by the pound. Mm-hmm. I did... Buy a loaf of the bread, though. The bre and I had, I had a slice. I was told to eat a slice in the middle. We did, too. And I have pictures, so I'll put those up on our Instagram and on our Facebook when we do that. I've got some, I bought some local honey from Council Bluffs over the, uh, at the farmer's market last, or earlier this year. Ooh, did you dump honey on it? Not yet, no. But that's what I'm going to do. Okay. My, my plan for this week, or at least until the bread's gone, which might be tonight, actually. Who am I kidding? Is going to be make toast and uh, use local Council Bluffs honey. With actual bees from Council Bluffs. Ooh, that's nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, did you get the, which bread did you get? We got the sliced Italian twist. I got the sliced Italian twist. Ooh, it's so good. You know what? I think that obviously Orsi's caters a lot too, because I swear I've had that bread before, like at catered yeah. events and dinners and stuff. Um, oh, I can't wait for our listeners to see the pictures. I took such lovely pictures of the stuff. And I will say, I got an extra item, Aaron. You know what I got? Uh, I got Orlando. It's just called Orlando. Hot uh, Jardin, Jardinera peppers. That's I might be saying that wrong. Uh, so here, I'll show you narrow, the picture. Yeah. I'll show you the of the Orlando. Oh, you, really? You got those? Those look good. Yeah, Orlando. Oh, those would and be really good. Those would be good on, on like a, on a roast beef sandwich on those on those buns. Ooh, yeah. And you know what? It comes. I think it's in olive oil. I'm hoping it's olive oil anyway. Um, but it's in an oil, and it's all these different like peppers and like other vegetables and stuff. See, I don't know about you, but when I think of like Italian bread, 
my brain immediately goes to Rotella's, you know, because I mean, I've always, and I know that they're, I don't know if Rotella's is entirely from Omaha. They just happen to make it from Omaha, but I mean, I don't know. What if, what if they're rivals? What if they're like, don't, they probably are. They're like, yeah, you I, met, you dare to use the R word on the Orsi's episode. But I mean, like, you know, like when I think of like Rotella's, I think of like, you know, it's good, but it's also like, I think of it as, as like, you know, supermarket, like, yeah. Like I can go to hy V and buy Rotellas all day long. It's like so like walking into Orsi's and buying the bread that they made that morning is right yeah, off the shelf. It feels much more rustic and more like handmade yeah. and it just has way more of a like a home taste. And yeah. it was definitely yeah, it definitely had more of a this is a fresh baked thing that I need to eat before it spoils and not like a Yeah, this exactly. is a store bought thing. That's yeah, I'll just you know, it'll it'll last virtually forever with preservatives. Oh, did did you talk about what you thought about the bread? Uh, I don't know. Did I? I mean, I like the bread. I mean, I only had one slice. Just kind of a, just so I could have something to talk about. I mean, uh, yeah, I had two little end slices with butter on it and some of that, uh, Orlando. I'll be, uh, I'll be eating more of that as the week. Can, okay, I'm sorry. Right now I'm putting new batteries in the, uh, in your, uh, the rat man because, uh, the, the batteries from John. Okay. Well, I'll keep, I'll keep going on. I'll keep going on. So the bread, the Italian twist. It was seriously so good because I think when you get it, it's like super fresh. And it I think it is from what I remember, I want to say it's only good for like a few days. I mean, it's it's probably good for longer, but I mean, at its freshest point, obviously. Yeah, I mean, it is a fresh Um, baked bread. It's not uh, full of preservatives and chemicals that make it last. But it's a white, it's like a regular white bread, like an Italian. And it's so freaking good. Like it just has that high quality handmade lovely taste and if you put a little butter on there ooh. oh i gotta put but butter yeah, so uh oh my god so diving into the gouda rooney right away I, I, it's so huge and heavy i was like yes and then uh so right away i cut the whole gouda rooney in half and i was like we are saving half no matter what so we have half for either later tonight or tomorrow um and then i was cutting up our i was splitting up the rest for our like lunch today yeah, you got yeah. it running again. Um, so then I split it up today, and I was seriously diving into that Gouda Rooney. Ladies and gentlemen, the double-crusted pizza. It's so freaking good. I think their specialty here, and this is obvious, is the crust. And then their ground beef, their specific ground beef. Did you get something with ground beef, or what What did you get? Well, Tony, I got a quarter sheet of pizza. That's six slices Ooh. of um. Uh, well, actually, if you look on their website under menu, yeah, the uh, when they say their pizza ingredients, it says like toppings, pepperoni, bacon, chicken, pineapple, <laughs> jalapeno. Like I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be bacon and chicken as a different <laughs> topping, like another comma. Yeah, but I, I read it as one thing, so I'm like, oh man, that sounds good. Now, yeah. I've never had Orsi's pizza before. I mean, I've had it before, but like you know, if you're at a place and they have Orsi's, I've never actually sat down like this is Orsi's pizza. I'm gonna eat Orsi's pizza, and it's from Orsi's. So like, I'm not wasn't really familiar with necessarily like the flavor profile and like what yeah. makes an Orsi's pizza Orsi's. So I I probably should have started with like a pepperoni or a hamburger or something a little more base Keep it to get a, a base sense of like how this stacks with other pizzas. But I went for the bacon chicken because again, that's what you like. Probably missing a divider either that or they just uh, <laughs> for whatever reason only have bacon chicken as one topping. I don't know. <laughs> I seriously I, love so you just said I'll take bacon chicken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. So what if they're like, no, that's not a thing. It's just that we forgot a comma. It's like and the, the web guy's going to charge us like, you know, $50 to fix that. And we'd rather just like save our money and put it into our into our toppings. Also, like I was like looking at the pizza specials, and there's like mini mini combo, quarter sheet quarter sheet combo. I'm like, and I was thinking like, what's the combo? Is that like mean that like, you yeah, get a quarter sheet of pizza? No, it's like we're just supposed to know what the combo is already. But then it's, it's like, like oh, that's probably a combination pizza. That's just like the, you know, whatever their combination is. That's probably what that is. What the yeah. price would be. Yeah, I'm gonna look up Orsi's combo. But anyway, so I got the quarter sheet of bacon chicken pizza. And uh, six slices of garlic bread. Ooh. Oh, you got the garlic bread? Dive into that. Well, Dive into the, what you dove into. I want to hear I'm about gonna that. I'm going to tell you something, Tony. The garlic bread isn't just garlic bread. Oh, my God. I think I see it. Does it have cheese on it, too? It's garlic cheese bread! Oh, my God. I think I'm looking at a, pizza, a picture of it now. I almost said a pizza of it. Oh, my God. 
Oh, man. If garlic cheese bread isn't the reason to put in a number uh, 34 church bells, I don't know what is. Oh, my land. That looks so lovely. We considered that, but then we were like, eh, we're getting a whole Gouda Rooney. We better not do that. I mean, you could have got both. Aaron, I'm telling you, next time when you want to go haywire, you should just buck up and just get an entire Gouda Rooney and make it last a few days. Uh, I'll tell you what, Tony. If I had a Gouda Rooney... I wouldn't last a couple days. <laughs> <laughs> it would destroy him. What does that even mean? It would destroy him, folks. <laughs> it would destroy him. I, I will totally do that, though, because it sounds good. Uh, but anyway, so, like, you know, pizza is a is a very personal thing, you know? Like, I know people who've, like, you know, gone to, like, overseas. Their, their family's gone to overseas their entire lives. I know people whose families have gone to, like, La Casa their entire lives. I know families who's, who went to a... Uh, Pizza Hut their entire times. That was that was us, you know, with the buckets and the, you know, tabletop Miss Pac-Mans and yeah. all that stuff. So, like, you know, and, and obviously, like, you're going to get a different kind of pizza at one place than you are from the other place. And this one, to me, definitely felt like an old Italian family recipe like you're going to find at a, yeah. at a La Casa or something more so than, say, definitely. a more... Well, not Americanized, not necessarily modernized, but like a more contemporary thing like you might yeah. find at, say, Lighthouse or Mama's yeah. or Roman Coin Varsity. I know it's Varsity Roman Coin, but, you know, sue me. Yeah, but whatever. Random review. Ah! Awesome pizza and can order for takeout two hours before pickup. Good timing. <laughs> you know what would be kind of fun, even though this is kind of messed up to do this, but I want to, I would, I just went to lowest ratings. I want to read a couple bad reviews just because it's fun. Because, like, I feel like people that are negative about a place, it's just interesting to see how they word stuff. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay. I'm going to go to a longer one. I'm sorry. I really wanted to like this place based on reviews. It's obviously very popular and probably the pizza. Is uh, damn, why am I stumbling on this? And probably the pizza is other people's personal taste, but mine was an undercooked doughy crust and just greasy separated cheese. Love to support these historic places. I wouldn't go back. Not my type of pizza. <laughs> uh, okay, one more, one more bad review. These are seriously fun. They, we need to start making this a thing. Bad review. I'm from Chicago area, and we have awesome pizza places. Though for the price and the amount of food you get, I can't nor won't complain. Owner was nice, polite. I didn't call it in, so I waited there. Food was mad fast, and the pizza was good. Why was that a low review? Did I go down to the higher one? Oh, yeah, I think that, I accidentally skimmed down to the higher review. That sounded like Never a pretty mind. good review to me. I'm blundering this. Okay, one more. Terrible pizza, canned spaghetti sauce flavoring, and tasteless toppings. That sounds like a, re- a rival pizza place is just making something up. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing canned about a place like Orsi's. I mean, <laughs> unless unless you're comparing it to spaghetti so- or pizza sauce that they canned themselves, which they might do. <laughs> yeah, they're complaining about the hand-canned tomatoes. <laughs> uh, anyway, t- you tell me more about your stuff, Aaron. Well, I will tell you one thing that I did not like, Tony. Yeah, because be I will be lay honest. it out. I will be honest. I wish that the garlic bread would have included some kind of like a side of sauce. Oh, it did not include yeah. any side of sauce or anything. Yeah, they're um, so stingy with their sauce. There was a picture on uh, on Facebook with the garlic cheese bread, and there was like looked like a little thing of like the marinara like a or whatever cup of marinara. And they have the I guess they they have super lovely. From what I yeah. remember, a very lovely homemade spaghetti sauce. So she was I telling was, us about it while we I were I was there. really looking forward to like dipping that garlic bread yeah. into the sauce and biting into it. Oh my! I gosh. don't know if that's something you have to pay extra for as a side or just ask for, but like, I did not have it, and you know what? I did not like that. What was the sauce level on the pizza you had, like? On on our on our Gouda Rooney, I saw little hints of red, like little bits of tomato, 
And, yeah. But I think it was sauce dabbed here and there. But I the, like really there wasn't much sauce at all on the Gouda Rooney. But I mean, it felt like it was like you know medium saucy to me. Not not saucy as in like there's sauce like dripping out. Yeah, I yeah. Think I, there not wasn't like yeah. Valentino's. Ha, there's a yeah. There's there's a classic Italian family recipe for you there. <laughs> Honestly, that's too saucy to me, the Valentinos. Yeah. And yeah. too sugary. Anyway, but we're not talking about Valentinos. Well, you are now, and now I am. <laughs> I will say this, though. I miss going to the Valentinos Express and just grabbing a slice, you know, because, I, like, you know, they had, like, the little, the open, like, pizza slice, like, the little salad bar and stuff. And I'm, I'm uh-huh. sure they're open somehow in the middle of a pandemic, which, by the way, people, if you're not aware of this, this is being recorded in the middle of a global pandemic. You guys, it's worse than ever right now in Omaha, Nebraska. COVID-19. Be careful. Don't put people at risk. And wear your goddamn mask. A mask is not political. It's a mask. 100,000 years from now, when aliens find this uh, as the last recorded message from the human history, they'll have an idea of like what we're talking about. You know, anyways... I haven't been there since the pandemic started like that, and I, I miss going to like Valentino's Express. Not... Anything to do with with with, uh, with Orsies or anything else, but you know, other than sometimes it's a, we sidetrack. It's okay. Sometimes, well, we I mean, sidetrack. it's it's not necessarily a sidetrack because it is a regional or a local pizza chain that is owned, I think, kind of by an Italian family that's from here. But I mean, it's hard to really say because like a lot of that might just kind of be the story. Like, there's like the here's yeah. Nino on the side. There's there's you know maybe they're Italian like I'm Italian. Ha! Huh. You got an <laughs> Italian name, which makes you more Italian than I am. <laughs> oh, man. Well, no, I see. Lee, are you nuts? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. Benassi, Benacci. That was a weird which... tangent. Anyways, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> the pizza was good, but it's like, I mean, I'm not familiar with their pizza, so like, I, I don't know if I could fully appreciate it as much as if I, you know, was like, you know, had some familial connection to where it's like, oh man, I, I I've used to have this, and that's not to say it was bad by any means. It was a good pizza, yeah. But you know, it was just like trying like a pizza that you've never had before, and it's like this is such a different thing than like, yeah, than the pizzas that I'm I'm used to. And it's not one of those things where like you're at four aces saying I wouldn't know or C's from C C's. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll definitely yeah yeah I would, I feel like I would definitely know the difference between like or C's or C C's. Um, that being said, I kind of miss C C's. I mean, it was like, for the absolute cheap crap that it was. It was uh, it was kind of fun, and even after a while, <laughs> you, you kind of you get used to the people yelling at you like C C you later. It's like no no you won't. <laughs> Yeah, you're like, shut up, never say that to me again. Yeah. And then they're like, Jesus, you're taking it too seriously. Yeah, it's like, we're, we're forced to say that. We, do you think we want to say that? No. You but know, will they, we? Yes. Oh, wait. The manager keeps track of that. If we don't say it, we don't get paid for the day. So all in all, I'm going to say I like OCs. Would I like the Gouda slap down fresh right in my lap? Yes, but we got it to go, and it was still pretty fresh and good and still pretty warm. Aaron's yeah. was a little cool because they must have made it too early for him. Well, I know, I'm just saying that it would have been, if it was fresh, hot off the plate, you know, it would have been a lot better. And I'm, when I when I microwave up the rest of my, you know, quarter sheet and, uh, you know, finish that up, you know, maybe tonight... Yeah, I'm sure it'll be quite good. I mean, I, you know, it's it's yeah, it was a, when you warm it up. I'm definitely glad we got to Orsi's. I'm really looking forward to eating that bread over the course of the next couple of days. One more random review. Ah! After reading so many amazing reviews, we couldn't wait to try this place, even if it meant a 30 minute drive across town and paying more than we usually would for pizza. The service was outstanding, fast and friendly, but the pizza pizza left much to be desired. What? It needed more sauce and more seasoning. Overall, it was pretty bland, even with all that meat. The crust was basic. I think adding a little butter and garlic would even step it up a notch. We might give it another try if we're in the neighborhood, but sadly, we're pretty underwhelmed. Oh, okay. Blonde lady named Sommer. Oh my God! Okay, <laughs> blonde. Okay, blonde lady named Sommer. You're gonna literally tell them that they need to add a little more butter and that garlic. Was, that's to actually their her name. Yeah, Sommer. Yeah, I'm not gonna say the last name, but this is pretty oh. damn funny. 
it's just funny. It's like, I think they know how to make pizza a little bit better than you would. So they could yeah, add that, more butter or garlic to their crust, but I think you're funny. But I, I feel like part of this is probably like, this is probably how like uh, the Orsi. That, yeah, every American. The, or, the Orsi created it, you know, back in 1919, you know, got home from the war, you know, fighting, you know, for this country, you know, and, you know, good for him, you know, for that. Um, yeah. You know, and it's probably an old family recipe, and it's just one of those things where, like, people have been going there their entire life. It's like, if they change it up, and they made it, like, suddenly you walk in there, and it's like Valentino's. It's like, oh, well, wait, what's going on here? That's, you know, not not to say that that's a, you know, a bad thing for Valentino's, because, again, I enjoy a, a slice of Valentino's as much it's as the next It's just all guy. different, right? It's just a different, a different pizza. It's a different experience, and it's a different, you know, I don't think it was necessarily lacking in flavor or seasoning. Yeah, I mean, either. But they, they don't there know is how a to certain, enjoy it. Yeah. There's a thickness to like the sheet that they're using like that. It reminds me kind of like homemade pizzas that we would make as when I when I was growing up, but we would make them from like a kit, like a Chef Boy RD kit. Again, not to compare like, you know, yeah. a long standing tradition of like pizza to Chef something Boy you could buy in a store. But you know, it's just yeah. like it reminds me of like making a pizza in a cookie sheet. You know, yeah, like the, exactly. the depth of the of the dough, the the way the dough would would cook. And that's probably what it is. I mean when it, it, again, you're buying them by a quarter sheet, a half sheet, or a full sheet, or a mini. Yeah. I wonder if the mini is also square, if they make the mini round. Oh, my God. I don't know. I guess we're going to have to go again. You know what really irritates me, Tony? And I only recently discovered this. What? Totino's party pizzas are now square. Oh, my God. That's not even... That's a whole, like, game change. Yeah, I mean that that would be like if basketball became a square, like a basketball. Like, it oh, should. hey, hey, everybody it really should. It makes more sense that way. Yeah, they. And you're like, how does that make more sense? <laughs> 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 no. Anyway, so, hey, what's our synthesizer time that we're going to talk about? Well, Tony, let me tell you about our synthesizer. Our synthesizer is the Oberheim Two Voice Pro. Two voices, not just one. So, so right you're telling you're like, me there's two voices. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> um, oh, we should have talked about our, the Jim Henson thing that we went to today. Oh my week. God, yes! Tell them where we went, Aaron. We went to the other day. Tell them. Yeah, the other the other day we all went to. Uh, and by all, I mean like Tony and Whitney and uh, Derek Silkman and myself. Derek Silkman, local actor and friend. We went to the Jim Henson Exhibition Imagination Unlimited at the Durham Western Heritage Museum. Yeah. And here, I know what you're doing. You're already judging us, saying, oh, during COVID, you're going somewhere. Yeah, well, guess what? There was barely anybody there. We were wearing our masks and staying away from each other. And there was only about a total of four other people there. Actually, that was my own personal, you know, projecting. Nobody else was even judging us. They were just kind of thinking in their heads, oh, Jim Henson, like Big Bird and like The Count and Bert and Ernie and like who else? I mean, characters that Jim Henson created back in the 60s for different TV shows and uh, commercials. commercials. And like, it's amazing because like, it's one of those things where like, I mean, it might come as a surprise to some, some of our listeners here, but uh, I, I make puppets. I have got a house full of like various puppets and mannequins, uh, in addition to synthesizers and pinball machines and stuff. And I've gone through phases where I make puppets. And whenever I see like a, you know, like a plastic cap like this or a plastic spoon uh-huh. or a ping pong ball or a small foam ball, I immediately see like puppet eyes. I see like you could cut a little piece of round felt. Yeah. Or take the little plastic bit out of a googly and eye and, kind of, and make it into a, an, an eye and make it into a puppet and like, you know, make, you know, I've got sock puppets. I've got foam puppets. I've got all sorts of crazy puppets, handmade ones, store-bought ones, ones that have been used in uh, short films by Tony Bonacci. <laughs> Lady, are you nuts? Exactly. And, uh. Ones that have been used in the music videos for the Derby Birds. Yeah, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Uh, Let me get the number to your landline. So a lot of people kept saying throughout the past few weeks, you know, like, oh, well, Aaron, you should really go to this or you'd really like this. And it's like, oh, yeah, I would. On the other hand, I'd have to leave my house and then (laughs) during pandemic. But um, I know like uh, Derek and I were talking about going for a while. but (laughs) You were talking about going. And then you were like, hey, you know. 
you want to go to this with Whitney and I tomorrow? And I'm like, well, we got to see if Derek can go because like, because you had talked we to were going to, we were going to go to that. And uh, I'm we glad couldn't we leave went. him behind. I'm glad we went because yeah, like you mentioned, I mean, it is during a pandemic. So doing anything involving people or indoors or whatever seems extra, not seems, I mean, it is extra frightening, but they <laughs> are very, they're very limited on the people that would go there. We went at a time in the afternoon where there was, uh, you know, was not a lot of people at all. And at no point did you feel like I'm, you know, butting up against these people. I'm going to, I'm definitely going to come down with whatever, you know, f- from these people. And there, the, they were, yeah. I'm assuming of their volunteer staff, there, kind of like cleaning things, wiping things down, you know, and, uh-huh. but being there and seeing the creatures and looking at their faces and looking at like the stitching, looking at like the count's teeth and wondering like, is that like wood that he just like whittle down like pieces of wood and that's what that is? Wow, that's interesting, you know. And yeah. Seeing the like the eyes, seeing like 40, 50 year old Muppet eyes, you know, and like been painted over and stuff. That, like that. was it's the cool like, part of being able to see the puppets up close, like really close, because it was behind glass, but you could literally get within like a foot of the doll or the puppet, not the doll. The because like literally everybody that's ever gone to this thing takes the picture. Of Kermit, like right when you first walk in, there he is waving at you, you know? Oh, yeah, there's Kermit. Like everybody has the exact same picture of it, but like, you know, it's like, I'm interested in like the little details. Like I'm on, like, you know, if I'm like working on this puppet eye thinking, gosh, darn it, why can't I make this puppet eye look better? I can look back at this like picture of these like, you know, completely, truly iconic figures that are part of like our collective history as humans at this point. Yeah. Up there with like, you know. Egypts and Orses, you know, like Egypt. It would Egypt's honestly be like seeing like Beatles memorabilia. Yeah, maybe so, even more widespread popularity. To me, it's like well, being able to just to see like how did this how did this man do this? How did Jim Henson create these things? You know, yeah. especially you know because at this point he died thirty years ago. He was only fifty three years old. To imagine all the stuff that he's done in, in that time, yeah, in, in that time, you know, because like. How old, what are what are we? Are we in our thirties or forties or whatever like that? And what have we truly accomplished? I know. Exactly. What have we really created and, and contributed to the world? I guess none of it is nationally known, but I guess if we became famous, maybe they would have said like we did a decent amount. But yeah, yeah. And like somebody once said, I'm not internationally known, but I'm known to rock the microphone. I get stupid. I mean, contagious. Stay away from me. It's an outrageous. Uh, no, wait, I'm sorry. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, as a Rob Bass a, and DJ Easy huh, Rock, is that the one? I was about to laugh, but I had to sneeze, so I didn't. You got to do the laugh And it sneeze, wasn't yeah. a fake laugh, Aaron. It was going to be genuine, but I'm telling you, I had to sneeze. Yeah. So anyways, the Jim Henson ex- exhibition is great. You know, it's I know it's scary going out and doing things, but, you know, you're in a big, huge, gigantic, high-top museum, and, you know, it's as, as safe as anything you can possibly do indoors, you know. Masks it's, it's, on. Masks on, you know, say, you know, distant and... uh Make sure you talk to the girl at the uh, at the at the in the gift shop. Uh huh. Yep. And because uh, she was very nice, she was very nice. She ran all over the place to get a shirt for me, and then when she came back with the shirt, I was like, "Oh yeah, I just wanted to see if you had it. I'm not actually going to buy it, you know." Yeah. I mean, I bought it. and I'm wearing it what right was, now. But I mean, did you? Re- what was her name? <laughs> what was that girl's name again? Uh, it did was uh, it was Amanda. Oh, Amanda. Yeah, she was nice. Yeah. yeah. So Amanda, if you're listening to this. Let's uh, drive off to Mexico and get married. And, um, <laughs> yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, oh my we'll, gosh! Yeah. We'll start like a Mexican like puppet troupe, and we'll entertain uh, the the gringos that come in from the states. You know, once the borders are open again, and you can actually do such things. Absolutely. And if anybody knows Amanda that works at the gift shop there, <laughs> tell her that Aaron wants to go on a date with her. Well, no, he didn't say that. I'm I'm just you know I'm making that up. Yeah. Yeah, but she seemed like a very very nice young lady, and. Uh, if she has a boyfriend, he probably listens to our show and he's going to go, huh? He might be, he might be one of the other munchy boys. The, the other, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were little kids. And this is going to start like the munchy, the, the munch off, you know, we're going to have like a, but um, anyways, okay. So you're talking about like, what synthesizer did we use? And I said oh, yeah. the, Oberheim, the Oberheim two voice pro. And I also use the Oberheim SEM pro. Now, Tom Oberheim is one of the great godfathers of American synthesizers. You know, there's Bob Moog who created like, you know, the Moog modulars from the 60s and that were used on like, you know, switched on Bach and used by Wendy Carlos, you know, for like like uh, the the Clockwork Orange soundtrack and stuff. Uh And um, then he created like the mini Moog, you know, like which was completely revolutionized 
synthesizer. Suddenly you had the Moog sound on a little keyboard that you could gig with and play shows with. And then there's uh, Dave Smith who created like the Prophet 5 that, you know, that I've played previously in Munchie Boys. And then there's Tom Oberheim. Tom Oberheim had a different idea where it's like, all right, well, this guy's got the synthesizer. And then there's these Japanese synthesizers coming out from like Roland and Korg and stuff. I'll create like a little expander module so you can like add a voice onto your synthesizer. And he created the synthesizer expander module, which is a... Uh, I Not might have the synthesizer. And then he, once he created this module, he's like, well, I can put two of these and a sequencer in and have a two voice. So he was most active in like, like the 70s, 74 to 79, is I think is when, the, when he was actually active as a thing. And then he sold his name off to like a lot of these like early pioneers like Moog, Dave Smith and, and, and Tom Oberheim sold their names off to like other companies and other companies would buy them. And a lot of times guitar companies would end up like with the stuff like that. So I think like Gibson ended up owning the name Oberheim. But anyways, like Tom Oberheim, like back in the six, seven, eight years ago, whatever, started remaking this, uh, his synthesizers. He remade the SEM and, you know, and then he made the two voice, which is his favorite instrument for like that he had ever made. Like the two voice again has two of the synthesizer expander modules and a little sequencer. Are you listening, and, people? Are, yeah, because this this I'm 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 laying on some uh, Oberheim some knowledge, knowledge to you, and uh, I bought mine. Uh, oh gosh, four years ago when I was working on producing the Vital Organs, this Hysterical Hunger album, and the Oberheim Two Voice Pro is one of the more signature synthesizers that's more most responsible for the overall sound of that album. I'll play a few examples of like the tracks on their own here. like one of the best single best single synthesizers that I actually have in this in my in my home and that's saying a lot because I've got a lot of synthesizers oh but it's also God. such a unique character that it's like no I can't really use it for everything because everything will start to kind of have this big you're gonna have to send me a picture of it because I feel like we've been forgetting to do that I, I will send you a picture of that yes I will definitely send you a picture so anyways I created the track entirely with the Oberheim two voice pro there are no effects going on here this is all the synthesizer and what it does and the way it sounds. And uh, I will play that for you now. That was freaking dope. Yeah, and again, there's no effects. That's just uh, a few layers of the synthesizer. It just sounds so... It's rich and it's full, and there's but there's there's years and years of experience and knowledge and synthesizing yes. love put into one machine. And um, I think part of why I, I brought it down is, like, it always kind of sits up there. I always see it, and it's always, like, I always love to play it. It's one of those ones that you can get lost playing all day long. Yeah. But again, it's such a unique character that there's it's not a, like there's not a lot of stuff that i do where it's like i need that character but and then like once you know like i don't want it to like it's one of the, it's like it's like a like a saffron or something right you know it's a a very rich unique flavor and if you use it sparingly it's like it's it just makes everything more amazing but if you use it too much it's like oh why'd you put saffron in this like you know pizza you don't put saffron on pizza yeah like like yeah why'd you put saffron on these chicken nuggets oh wait that'd be good yeah, no, actually, no, it wouldn't. What saffron well, chicken. I I, you know, I don't know. Did we just create something? <laughs> Is there anywhere in Omaha where you can get like a good paella these days? What the heck? Service. 
What? Oh, I just read this news headline. It was like something crazy. And then oh. I was like, what? <laughs> Anyways, it just um, popped up. Uh, the reason I, I, I brought it down is I, I saw a, uh, there was a, a, a listing for it on Reverb for uh, one of these Synthesizer 2 Voice pros. You know, again, he didn't make that many of them. He made a few of them like that. He stopped making them and uh, then they basically became complete, instantly on Atanium. And uh, one just sold for $10,000 the other day. Oh, my. It was uh, less than a third of that when I bought mine brand new, you know, four years ago. So the fact that, like, like I would never sell mine, not for $10,000, not for $20,000. Well, maybe for twenty. No. <laughs> you don't sell stuff. You buy stuff. On the other hand, I wouldn't buy one for $10,000. You know, I mean, if I if I were a millionaire and I didn't have one, maybe, you know, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm glad I have it. It's never going anywhere. It's a it's 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 a lovely sounding instrument it's very inspiring to use and gosh darn it it just looks it looks great it sounds great it's just you heard it you heard what it sounds like you get it tony seems kind of transfixed and uh, i think we're this is going to be one of our longer episodes Sorry. where it's just the two of us so <laughs> i was looking you okay tony i mean yeah i was like reading i did the thing where i was zoning like out synthesizers uh, boring you i was zoning <laughs> out reading something i don't know why but yeah so i guess should we uh, wrap this episode up yeah are you going to go out on another... Oh, yeah. Yeah. There we go. We got back to the, the Casio Ratman. I'll post... Yo. When I post the pictures, I'll post some of the Jim Henson thing, thing, to thing, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So this has been episode 26 of the Munchie Boys. Of the Munchie Boys. Munch, 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 boys. Munchie Boys. Munchie Boys. Munchie Boys. Munchie Boys. Mama, mama, muchy, muchy boys. boys. <laughs> yeah.